<laughs> hey people. Shall we? <whistles> Got that, um, who's on, who's on? Did anyone heard that, uh, that bicep song? I say it's new, it's been out for a little while now. It's called Apricots. Has anyone heard that? It's been stuck in my head all day. Hey, how are you? So, it's Monday. How was your weekend, people? I, um, I do actually have Yeah, Bicep. A song by Bicep. It's called Apricots. Bicep did one called Glue that you might have heard. Um did some other bits and bobs as well. Um Yeah, that's a good tune, good tune. I'd play it on here, but last time I played music on a live video, it <laughs> got kicked off. Um, got the Facebook police after me. So, it's on every one of the playlists. Oh, decent, okay. Anyone want to hear a joke? Let's go. Let's go for it. It won't be as bad as one of my jokes. Or maybe it will. Actually, maybe it will. Look who we look who's saying it. Atlas. Atlas, yeah, decent. Um, I've actually got some questions today. I've been building them up, so I actually have something to talk about. Um Katie, oh, excuse me, guys. <coughs> excuse me, I cannot believe I just did that on live. That's a sneeze. Um, lovely. What do you call a herd of sheep tumbling down a hill? This is a drum roll, by the way. It's a bloody long drum roll. Come on, Lydia. Come on. End of the joke. Come on. She's mugging me off. This is a dressing gown, by the way. Yeah. A lamb slide. Oh, Jesus. It's almost, almost the calibre of my jokes, that is. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, that's so crap. Don't be like that better than any of yours. Oh, made me cry. Made me cry with that. Um, it was that bad. And it stank that bad. It, I made me cry. Your joke. Um. <sighs> so, I do actually have some questions. So, I always said that Monday... Oh. Monday, 
was more sort of fitness related. Friday Night Lives would be more sort of casual, random bits and bobs. So, uh, first question. If you have any questions, by the way, hit me up and I'll, and I'll answer them in here. But the first question that I've, I've got, um, what's your favourite calorie checking app? Um, so I use, I use NutraCheck, NutraCheck, get my bloody words out. Um, it does have a free trial, but you do have to pay for that one. Um, but it's like 30 quid for the year. Um, I think it's a lot more user friendly than say my fitness pal. Um, but at least that one's free. So if you're invested in something, chances are you're going to use it more as well. That's how I find it. Uh, my fitness pal must have sat on my phone for about a year before I even looked at it. Uh, and yeah, it's got pictures, so like visual aids. Colour schemes are a lot nicer, more user friendly, I think. Um, hi, Maddie. How are you? Um, another one is Chronometer, um, which Chronometer is really good. Um, it's very in depth though. It's it it breaks down. In fact, let's have a look. It breaks down everything into. It's been a while since I've been on it. Um, breaks down things into. Why are you not loading? Log in. There we go. So you could do a lot of blood work and stuff like that if it's, you know. Um. So, are we back? I think my internet just dropped out there. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that, if you're still there. Don't know what happened there. Said it paused it. Um, yeah, it's it has like a vitamin breakdown and stuff like that. It's very... Uh, It's very it's very sort of like heavy with because that's going into lipids and all sorts of stuff. Um so <laughs> yeah, that one's quite good. It's called chronometer. I don't know if you could see that. Is that not the most? Wouldn't know where to look. Yeah, again, it, it can overload you with information. That's the problem. Um, I think one of my housemates just came back. That's probably why it threw me off the internet. Lovely. Um, as soon as they connected, probably. So, yeah, that's, that's one chronometer, it's called. Um... It's good. It's really good. It's got a lot of lot of data. Um, very scientific. Uh, I use it with my clients. Not that they know about it, but that's how I calculate what they need and stuff like that. Um, but myself, I use NutriCheck, which <whistles> looks a bit like this uh, oh my Christ what is it with the slow internet I'm having some problems at the moment guys let me know if you're still there if it's still broadcasting well it says I've got no internet but okay Oh my God, look what the first thing that would come up. I've not searched anything. I've not searched anything. Look what the first thing that comes up. Cream eggs. Outrageous. But yeah, um, and then it breaks down different bits. So it's a lot more user friendly, I think. Um, Thank 
think it's the old virgin virgin internet is going down um but let me know try let me just try this so yeah let me know if you're still there guys don't know what the internet was doing some crazy shit turn this off just in case Genius bit of kit, these iPad Pros, absolutely love them. Had you stuck on a, had you stuck on a loop for a wee sec? Looked like you were having a wee boogie. Oh fucking mint. Well, I try and do these videos to help you people. Um, a few people, whoever watches it. Hopefully, it's all in one piece. Let's see. Um, so if anyone's got any questions, hit me up. Um, someone asked, do I measure all my meals? Um, no, <laughs> is the answer to that. Um, it's not really like, I don't find it super necessary. Um, I kind of know, okay, when you do it for so long, you, you get to a point where you don't need to track because you know what, you know, you know what's in what, um, and roughly what your allowance is and stuff. It depends if you're on your goal, it depends obviously. So if you're trying to cut down and you know lose body fat and stuff yes you need to be a bit more on it but if you're maintenance or bulking and stuff yes obviously the the best most efficient ways of doing stuff you would be counting every single calorie da -da -da -da, whatever else but sometimes it's just more to life sometimes you know am i going to go to a restaurant and sit there and so okay so yeah i'll go to some random random pub for a, a steak dinner or something am i going to sit there and go get my weighing scales out and just okay so that's that steak is 400 calories da, 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 whatever do you know what i mean no no um Tracking is the most efficient way to lose fat. Like you can stick your Herbalife, detox, skinny coffee, fat jab, aloe vera shit. I don't care who comes at me for that because it's I'm accurate, science based. So fucking bring it on. Um, I always get shit whenever I mention that sort of stuff. Um, uh, Yes, I know you're trying to make a living off of it. That's cool. Just don't force it on me. Or what I had the other day. Um, and some of you will remember this. I said the other day, a little while ago now. Uh, a certain, certain uh, herbal, herbal wife person um, went through my Instagram. Which is cool, you know when like people follow people you follow and yeah that's cool, but went through my pictures of when I was posting pictures of pe people saying like this is so and so they've done this da -da -da, they're doing so well, they would target those people and be like ah oh, I could help you on your journey da -da -da. just send one hundred and eight quid for this and I'll send you this packet of yeah, fuck off like <sighs> pyramid shit rant um yeah so where was i i still find it weird yeah there you go the net got it from one of them um and what that was because i hadn't replied because i hadn't replied to four of his messages he then took it on himself to go and try and find out who my clients were and target them, the people that continually like my photos. He even told me, he told me about it. He's like, like, how did you, 
what are you doing? He's like, oh, I'll just look through who liked your photos and then I'm guessing who your clients are from that. I was like, okay, cool. Fuck it, I'll get a life. Um, yeah, they did too. It's things like that. Just, yes, I get where they're coming from. Like, if I was, you know, in some sort of shit job and wanted to make a bit of extra money on the side and that was how I was doing it. I, I mean, I wouldn't do that, but I get it. I get it, okay? You're trying to be independent and be a boss mum and do your own business. It's not your own business. It's a pyramid scheme. MLM, fucking multi-level shit. So, yeah. Anyway. Uh, next question. <laughs> if anyone's got any others, let me know. Um, yeah, no, they... they they know that they're getting educated, but they think that what they have is like the, basically, um, I can only see through it because I worked in sales for a bit. And apart from targeting vulnerable people, like, why do you think Weight Watchers and Slimming World have done so well? Like, so well. Because the people that are either desperate but vulnerable people that go to them. And yes, yes, those do work for some people, whatever. But they target certain people. And as, as you would, as you as any business would. Like, if you were, I don't know. If you were selling a, I don't know, a PlayStation game. First thing that I saw. If you were selling a PlayStation game. You'd probably your adverts would probably target a an age range of fourteen to eight, whatever it is. I don't know, but so they research into stuff, and that makes sense. So chances are, if people are on a a fat loss journey or whatever, they might buy into your fat loss product if you're super, you know, get abs in fat burning ab potion in five days or your money back and things like that chances are you'll be interested in it yeah it's no use trying to sell it to me <laughs> do you know what I mean so although they do try because a lot of PTs don't make it enough money and that's the be all and end all and people don't make enough money doing the job they do or want to do or whatever they have to try and find other avenues. Other avenues. Like when you see these people getting all these like sponsorships and money off codes and yes, like I've had a couple of money off codes, but not like promoting some absolute bullshit. But like I've got a what was it, five percent code off of gold standard nutrition, which is like the chicken breast things I buy and the little pots and things like that. Good stuff, yeah? Not like 10% off this random clothing company I've never heard of. Which is just a commission code. Because they get money, like, bounce back when you play it. When you pay it, they get a reward for doing it. And it's just stuff like that. Which, again, everyone seems to be on this bandwagon. Um, uh... I think some people do have the results, but it's not sustainable. I think we're yeah no I've I know people that have done absolutely amazing on Weight Watchers and Slimming World, absolutely amazing. But I'm not knocking it. I don't need to knock it. The approach is sometimes questionable. That's all. That's all. Um, it's one of those things. I won't rant on it about because I always seem to be ranting on about them. Uh, next question I had was, is it worthy writing down the workouts I'm doing? And if so, why? So, yeah. Um, I'm a big believer in what gets measured gets managed. Um, plus, I think it can be positive when you do bad. It's horrible. Yeah, again, with those, again, that's one of the bads, the downsides to those sorts of clubs where you're stood in front of everyone and they're making you weigh yourself and the guilt-shaming thing, that's 
what I don't agree with. Um, some of the other sides, like some of the meals I've had, I've bought some of the meals to try them. Like the, the Weight Watchers microwave ones. Some of them are gorgeous. And the bars, some of the bars and stuff, tastes amazing. Um, just one of those things. Um, yeah, sorry, what I was saying, it, what if you don't if you don't write stuff down, how do you know you're gonna how are you tracking it? How are you progressing? Um I always see that like when I was when I was working in a gym, um still unsure if I'm gonna go back to working in a gym yet, we'll see. Um doing fine without it to be fair. Um I'd always see people just on a random they just turn up to the gym, which some days you need you need some days where you just have like a random day do things you love doing whatever but if you want actual results like people that are new to the gym they just go they just go onto the cross trainer they don't know why they're on the cross trainer they're just on the cross trainer or whatever and they're just on the see other people using these machines and they just think okay which is good because they're trying to learn they're trying to better themselves awesome when they don't realise what they're doing or they just select a random way and then go, oh, why did you pick that? Don't know. Don't know if it's too heavy or not. I don't know. What did you, you you've done this machine before? Yeah, I did it last week. Yeah, yeah I did this, I did this, I did the same machine last week. Uh, what did you use then? What weight did you use? I don't know. And it's like, it's just pick it. It's like blind luck. Random selection is one of, it's, I actually use that in, one of the formats I use for well, started with my own training, but like on a cable machine, you know, like a lap pull down sort of or cable machine. I think hopefully you know what I'm on about. Where I will get someone else or myself. It's easier when someone else is doing it. I'll be doing a certain number of reps on a machine on certain exercises, like a seated row, and then someone else will just pick the weight. I won't even see it, or I'll just. Okay, and then you go light, and then heavier, and then light, and then that's just one way of that's quite an advanced way of doing things. Um, I wouldn't necessarily get someone to do that on their own because it can be a bit dangerous. Um, going too heavy and stuff, you know, there's progression for a reason. That's that's the sort of thing I would I sometimes do just to spice things up a bit. And if you want like a a, a good sort of response um so yeah if you're not writing stuff down how do you know how do you know where you were last time how do you know like i try to write everything down um as much as i can with as much detail you know um what footwear i'm wearing have i taken like a pre-workout or what am I drinking at the time? Uh, I don't, again, you can go overboard with it, you know, what clothing you're wearing and stuff like that. Was I wearing a heart rate monitor and things like that? So, because that way you'll know, I've had it before where sometimes I've, uh, I use a deadlift, as I used, I deadlifted earlier, so I use deadlift as an example. Um, I've had it before where sometimes I've gone and I've done, I've done an exercise and it's not been as good. Um, I use this actually. I use this this same reasoning with with Lydia earlier when we were deadlifting. So I wrote down basically she changed from an overhand grip. So the the bars here, overhand grip here, to a hook grip, which is like un one under or one over. And like she was, oh, that's so much easier doing a hook grip. Also because it's not going to fall out of your hands. And I won't go into too much of it, but if you don't note down that you did that grip instead, say you got 89 kilos, well done by the way, 89 kilos using a hook grip. And then next week you could try it again, but you've got an overhand grip and it's harder and you can't understand why you can't lift the same amount. And then you think, oh shit, I must be going backwards. It can be, I've had it before where I've worn different shoes and it's made a different, it's made a difference or I've worn no shoes 
and like deadlifting, like just in socks or things like that. Or if I've used like straps um, or gloves or whatever it is. And it's if you don't write these sort of things down, you can't compare the two workouts. You can't compare the workout you used hook grip with the... It's not the same. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. What we got? What's Kerry saying? Hi, Kerry. Hi, Natalie as well. Everyone, who else is in? Uh, I find setting myself a target of reps and exercise sometimes makes me try and rush to the end. Whereas if I just do as many as I can, I make a note of that and just try and do one more next time. It's much more rewarding. Yeah, so... Um, there's there's a thing called tunnel vision, which I'm sure a lot of you will know. Have you ever seen horses with their blinkers? Like this. So, I've had it before, and I learned when I was quite new into the PT thing. Um, I'd say to someone, okay, right, we're going to do three sets of 10 to 12 reps of a certain exercise, of a, I don't know, leg extension machine. Yeah. You're going to do three sets with some rest, but you're going to do three sets and you're going to do 12 reps. And in their head, they're thinking, oh, fuck, I've got to do 36 reps at least of this. So I'm going to hold back. They don't do it intentionally all the time, but something in their head is going, fucking hell, I better pace myself here. Like if you were running a marathon, you're not going to shoot off at the beginning because you'll burn yourself out too quick. Does that make sense? Let me know if my gibberish actually makes sense. Um, I try and be as relatable as I can. If that makes sense. So, yeah, sometimes I will do things for, uh, like, my clients are on here, but... Um, also, the, one of the, the downsides to the having always having the same number of reps, you get used to it. You get used to it. And then also, some people don't progress. Like, have you ever... Who on here... Again, it's not a, a bad thing, but who on here has followed some sort of program or they've done, I don't know, let's say three times 12 reps on a, some sort of machine, and every time they use that machine, they do the same weight and the same reps. And that's good because they're getting consistent with it. But then they're not... A lot of people... You see it a lot, a lot where people just don't up the weight and they don't... They're comfortable. And they're, oh, no, no, I always do this weight. I always do this. I always do the same amount of numbers of sets and reps. Your body gets used to it. Um, over a bit, it takes a little... Sometimes it takes a bit of time to get used to a certain things. But the body gets used to it. And then it stops being hard, stops being challenging. So that, that muscular response, that that stimulus, that basically that effect you're trying to get on those muscles isn't challenging enough anymore because your body's getting used to it. If that makes, yeah, if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, so sometimes what I will do, and yeah, some of my some of my clients will 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 be on here, so they'll know. But what I'll do instead, yes, sometimes we do go for an amount of reps or amount of sets. I try not to focus on this mainly because if you don't get ten reps like you did last week, you probably feel shit about it. But that could be a number of things. That could be that you didn't eat enough. That could be that you've had a shit week, like a stressful day at work, and you've got not as much energy as you had the last time you tried the 10 reps. So, again, and you get it can, a lot of times it could be a negative thing where people are like comparing themselves to themselves, which is good because they shouldn't compare themselves to other people. Um, but they're comparing themselves to a different state 
a different physiological state. Um, I see it a lot with the females that I train where one week they'll be on a certain cycle, if you get what I'm saying. One week they can't understand why they've gained eight pounds. They can't understand it. They haven't eaten any different, they haven't trained any different, they've not nothing has changed apart from they were in that next phase of you know periods and stuff like that. So well that's that's not down to them, that's their body just naturally doing it. And that's not their fault. But they can't understand, oh no, I weighed this much more now. I can't and they do it with exercise and everything as well. So um like today, today I was deadlifting. Um a few months back I was quite comfortably deadlifting however much weight, 150, 160, whatever it was. I tried it today, I was like, oh, after not doing it for ages, and that consistency level's dropped. I'm like, oh, fucking hell. This isn't as easy as it was. And if I compared today to when I was training, say, six days a week, consistently, leg day, three times a week, whatever, it's... You're going to just feel crap. It's a downward spiral. So, hopefully that works. Um, is my internet better, by the way, guys? Can you still hear me? Am I, like, cutting out? Is it, like, jittery or anything? <whistles> that song's still stuck in my head, by the way. Um... Uh, has anyone got any questions, by the way? I've been on here for ages now. Uh, tips for staying motivated, I had as well. So, what I do, um, what I get other people to do is, like if they've got a fridge, I'll get them to stick, or whatever their goal is, whatever, I'll get them to stick it somewhere, like write it down and stick it somewhere. Or a picture of them that they want to get back to or whatever, but weight-wise. Stick it somewhere they're going to see it. But it's right in their face. Fridge door. Boom. My goal is I want to look good in my wedding dress. Whatever the goal might be. So um, I use a lot of whiteboards for stuff. Um, I mean, I have whiteboards for prospect clients I have. Whiteboards for my current clients, um, what I'm doing with them. I've got that board has their macros written on it, so like their calorie intake and stuff like that, what they're at at the moment until I change it, um, or they feel they want to change it. Um, that one's a to do to do list over there. Again, everyone's different. Um, but yeah, whiteboards work for me. That's one of them things. And because something's in my face, I'll be like, right. Like on, um, on my computer, I've got the sticky note things on the desktop. Yeah. Like post-it notes kind of thing. Um, so you're going to see it. It's going to be in your face. You're going to be like, oh, otherwise if it's out of sight, out of mind, you're not going to, that's like me trying to think of something I wrote down three months ago, but still on my to-do list, maybe. I don't know what that is. It's not, it's not that important because I'm not looking at it. I tend to primary school it. What does that mean? Um, da, 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 uh, stick it up all colourful. Yeah, again, different colours, different things. Um, you get a different response from certain things like... Sticky notes, yeah, again, there's different different ways. That's one way of keeping motivated. Um, another way is hiring a coach. If not me, someone else, but um, someone to keep you accountable. Um, or a friend to keep you accountable. Someone you can do something with, work out with, like a partner. Um, 
like I'll be honest, I wasn't, I knew I was going to work out today, but um, until I did a deadlifting session with Lydia, it put me in the mood to get to do deadlifts. So that was thanks to her, but I piggybacked off of her programming. Um, and I knew I was going to do some sort of barbell stuff, but I was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it might have been back squats or something instead, but yeah, that put me in the mood. And because we'd been training, like her doing stuff, I was like, yeah, yeah. And then I trained straight after. Um, hands hurt now. And thank you for kicking my butt, needed it. Well, you are welcome. And it's thanks to you, lovely people, that I get to do what I do for a living. Because if it wasn't for you guys supporting me, you know, like I always said, if I if I was a millionaire, I'd do this for free. Um, one of them things. If it wasn't for you lot of people, I couldn't do this. So, um, Amy, I work out alone at home at the moment. Yeah, and again, certain things are going to be harder for different people. Um... Has anyone, oh, this is going to be a bit of an iffy, but has anyone been in a relationship or with, lived with someone or whatever that was definitely not into fitness and they, they kind of just put a downer on stuff and I've done that before where they're like, no, 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 and then that, that, that makes you not want to do stuff. And then I've lived with people that do want to do fitness and it's so encouraging because it's like, yep, yeah, got a pal, got, you know, going to do it together different side of the coin right uh, tell you what I'll do one last question and I'm going to hook over to Instagram so uh, the last one on here I've got on this one is uh, I keep going around in circles with my diet how can I get out of this basically, basically get out of the rut um, so, you might be, um, you might be like over restricting yourself. That could be it. So what, what people tend to do, they want everything yesterday. I mean, like I said, that's what, what I was saying earlier about these like quick fixes. That's why these exist because everyone wants a magic pill. Everyone wants, oh, I want to be two stone lighter. And they wanted it yesterday. Do you know what I mean? So, hi Fiona, just joining in. Um, so, because everyone wants, everyone's impatient, you know, like, nowadays, we don't even have to wait for the internet. Do you, does anyone remember dial-up? Anybody remember trying to connect to the internet with dial-up? Before Wi-Fi, before broadband, all of that good stuff. Or GPRS, before 3G came about, anyone? No, we're so impatient. We get everything instantly now. Cameras you used to have to get the cameras developed. You know the pictures developed. Thirty-five mil cameras. Now, boom, it's there. You know, um, it applies to everything. You know, people used to send letters. Um, I remember writing letters and stuff to people. Yes, I was around when text messaging came about, but. You know, that's instant. You know, email, instant. Um, imagine back in the day when you had someone had to fly a note by pigeon and wait another two weeks to get a reply. Could you imagine? Or um, I, was watching, I was watching Peaky Blinders um, a little while back and they were saying, oh, yes, they're going by car like uh like a horse-drawn car and they were going somewhere i don't know where across the country and they was like yeah it'll take us a few days or a week or whatever and i was thinking fucking hell we could get we could just drive there in two hours now instead of a two-day trip you know we've got main roads and super fast cars and planes and do you know what i mean 
Um, but anyway. Where was I going with that? Oh yeah, everyone wants everything yesterday. So, and what they, what they might be doing, I'm not saying you are doing this, um, but what they might be doing is if they're over-restricting too much too soon, it might be that it's not achievable in your head or it might be that it's too tough of a target. You know, you can't just drop from 2,000 calories a day to 1,000 and not be hungry, do you know what I mean? Or, and not binge and not go back and undo your hard work, and do you know what I mean? So, if you're over-restricting, um, you know, going cold turkey, cutting out all the best things, oh, no, I don't want that, and cutting out all these foods that you love, if I told you, like I said, I've said this a million times, if I told you you could never have your favourite takeaway meal again, ever, all you'd think about is that meal. And you'd either lie about it and go and get it, guilt trip yourself, build yourself up so much that you, all you can think about and then you binge and then you have about 10 of them. Um, yeah, so uh, let's just hit the nail on the head there. Planning works best. So um, again, what I do with programming and stuff so like when people come to me and they want pt i will plan out okay i'm gonna do this with this i'm gonna do them this with them on this date this is the this is the end result this is what we want to do da, 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 da. um yes things do change along the way but there's a format there's a a plan in place I and mean, you can do that with your food you know you can literally can you can go overboard and be too rigid with it um, like someone, uh, someone I was talking to earlier, basically what we do is we have, a f uh, three rigid days, um, three, two or three eased up days and then one, I don't like using it as a free day, but one sort of go wild day, whatever, you, you know, again, and that's. I don't like using the word cheat meal and stuff, but it's the similar sort of thing. Um, you just got to find what works for different people. Um, some people, they will super, be super restrictive, you know, all week, and then they just binge like fuck on the weekend. Not ideal. It it works for some people. It It's all very case-dependent. Um, if you are... Going around in circles with your diet. Make a note of things and be like, why am I... What's triggering me to keep going back? Why am I going back to the stuff? Why am I repeating stuff? Um, why am I going around in circles? And it could just be that you're forcing yourself to have a food you don't like. It could be... Like I say, if you're cutting too much out too soon... It's normally a reasoning behind stuff. Mm. Right. Then I've got any questions before I head over to Instagram. If you do, follow me over there. Let's go. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in.